Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So I don't normally do this type of video, but when I heard that there was a snack box like this, the Sakura Co, where you could get some Japanese snacks, I just had to try it out. But of course, because this is an art channel, I had to put my own twist on it. So I ended up doing this artwork to go along with it. So this is one of the cakes that comes in this month's box and I believe it is a sweet potato based cake. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to unbox these, see what comes in this month's box. We're gonna go ahead and try a few of the things out and I do wanna go ahead and try this sweet potato cake on camera here as well. And I'm gonna try this tea because there's always a tea that comes with this box and there's always a type of dishware that comes with this box as well. So we'll see what that is. We'll go ahead, try the tea, try a few snacks out. And then at the end of the video, I will have a time lapse of this painting available for you guys if you wanna watch um, an extra few minutes at the end to see how this was painted. And I did use watercolors. This is the September box and I will have all the information down below. So without further ado, we're just gonna get right into the unboxing of this. So this is what the box looks like, and yes, mine looks like it did get stepped on or something, but the box does come with some bubble wrap around it, and I did go ahead and peek, and it doesn't look like anything was ruined in the box, because I was a little worried about that, but this is like thick, I don't know if you can tell, like it's pretty thick all around, so nothing was ruined. And as soon as you open it up inside, you'll see the top lid here says, nice to meet you, let's have tea, all the best things are shared. And then you can post um, your hashtag to Sakurako. I hope I'm saying that right. And then as you can see, we get a little postcard and a pamphlet. So this is this month's postcard and it's very like, I think this box is festival themed. So this goes along with that pretty well, I think. You can see sort of, I think it's a festival lantern or some kind of lantern in the picture. And then we also get some information in the back there. I will hold that there in case you wanna pause and read it. It's from Ayumi Chikamoto. I hope I'm saying that right. And I'm just gonna put a disclaimer out here. I'm not very familiar with a lot of the Japanese um, language and how to pronounce things so i do apologize if i pronounce anything incorrectly please let me know or please correct me down in the comments below if you would like and then we get this little pamphlet from sakurako and right away when we open it up there's a few pages of some information about this month's box and one thing that really drew me to this box was all the the products the cakes and whatever they get is locally sourced so it's nothing that's uh marketed they've gone to local like mom and pop shops and that's where they get all of this their stuff that they put in the box and i really appreciate that so you're getting authentic local japanese uh foods and then also in the pamphlet it gives you some information about all of the products so I'm gonna go ahead and pull stuff out. I will read what's in the pamphlet here and I'll try to put like a little screenshot of it up here so that you guys can read along as well in case I'm not pronouncing things correctly. <laughs> and the first thing I see in this box are these Festival Castella Bites. And it says these Castellas are a popular dessert at street festivals and come in various shapes and sizes. The batter is poured into piping hot molds, baked and then served by the bag full to lined up festival goers. This bite-sized version is made with flour and eggs from me, Prefecture. So that's kind of cool. So you can see in there, there's a little bit of designs on it. And they're sort of, they look like they're in the same shape right now, but I think they got a little bit squished. Um, but that's cool. And you get a whole bag of that to try. The next thing I see here are these Kobayashi Mentako beans. And it says caviar on them and they're spicy. So I'm a little intrigued to try these ones, but it says these crispy, crunchy beans flavored with spicy cod roe from Fukuoka Prefecture are the perfect snacks for walking through the festival grounds and enjoying the entertainment. So that's pretty cool. We have another one where you can try like a few at a time. So if you wanna give some to somebody else, um, you can do that. Next, we have these Ukai Senbai, I think. And it says they're made in Gifu Prefecture by Craftsman. This senbai is light and crispy with a gentle sweetness. Each senbai is branded with the image of two birds and is prepared using eggs and wheat flour sourced from Gifu Prefe Prefecture. And so you can see the little birds on the packaging there. And we do get two of these. 
So again, I really enjoy that a lot of these products that we're getting are multiples of it. Next, I see these petite kabuki crackers and it says these are sweet and salty mini fried rice crackers flavored with soy sauce and sugar. Petite Kabuki Age Packaging is a homage to the curtain used in Kabuki. The classic geometric pattern features lines in green, black, and persimmon. So you can see that on the packaging here. So that's pretty cool. Then we have this Shrimp and Sesame Age Mochi, and these look like maybe little crunchy crackers too. It says these handmade senbai have a base of mochi glutinous rice flour and are flavored with salted shrimp, nori, kanbu, dried bonito flakes, and nutty toasted sesame for an unami experience. Due to the high cooking temperature, the outside is crispy while the inside stays soft. That's really interesting. Now, I wonder if it's got like a really, you know, shrimpy fish taste or if it's just sort of like a saltier taste. So I'm kind of intrigued about those too. And the next thing we have here are these Kaminari Ginger Okashi. And again, we get two of them. It says these Kaminari Okashi, named after Asakusa Kaminari Mon, is a classic suite that has been around since the Edo period as a lucky charm for moving house. The rice puff contains ginger, sesame, and peanuts, with just a touch of sweetness, it's the perfect snack to pair with tea, either for a moment to yourself or with guests. Then we have these Ropo Manju. And it says these Ropo, or six-sided Manju, is a sweet that has been enjoyed in Japan since the Meiji period, 1868 to 1912. So called for its cube shape, it is made with a high quality wheat flour based butter and filled with the subtle sweetness of azuki red bean. Oh, that's really interesting. I've never tried anything with red bean in it. And I know in our Western culture, beans aren't really that sweet. So I'm really interested to try uh, this out too to see how the red bean is, if it's much sweeter than our, you know, normal beans that we use over here. Then we have this tiramisu bomb kuchen, and it says this has traces of alcohol in it. So interesting. It says bomb kuchen is prepared on a rotating spit with layer after layer of batter slowly being added. The process to make this dessert is time consuming and requires a high level of skill. This version features the rich flavors of tiramisu with coffee liqueur and rich cream. Enjoy this buttery cake for breakfast with your morning tea or coffee. Ooh, that's really interesting. And you can see, I don't know if you can see there, if I put it close enough, you, there's like little layers within it. You can see these tiny little layers. So that's really interesting. And it feels very like soft. Like a lot of these still feel very like soft and moist. Then we have this melon pan and it just looks like a big piece of bread or bun or something like that. Um, but it says here that the melon pan is a classic street pastry in Japan with a sugar coated crust inspired by the crisscross pattern of a melon. The pastry dough is made with a mix of wheat and brown rice flour with melon flavored custard folded in for a moist and fluffy texture. Oh my gosh, that sounds delicious. So there's some kind of like melon flavored custard in there and I'm totally all for that. Then again, we have another two pack here and these are the Tokyo Banana Manju. And it says that these are inspired by the chocolate bananas that are a staple at festival food stalls. This manju is made with the delicate sweet egg dough wrapped around a smooth white bean and banana filling. That's interesting. So it's white bean and banana filling with a smooth sweet dough. So I'm really interested, like all of these, I'm really interested to try out. And since I'm not gonna be able to try everything on camera today, because I do wanna enjoy it throughout the month, um, let me know down in the comments below if you want me to come back, give you my feelings on the box, like at the end of the month, once I've tried everything, you know, I could do like a little update um, down below or a little quick video just letting you know if I would buy this box again or not. Then we've got this Hanabi jelly and it's got like these little things on the bottom of it, which is kind of cool. It's like these little round pieces. And it says this beautiful clear jelly dessert 
has a pattern inspired by fireworks. It is made with a blend of delicious fruit juices, such as apple, green plum, orange, grapefruit, raspberry, and melon. And that just sounds so delicious, especially in the summertime right now. It just sounds refreshing and delicious. Then we get another jelly as well, and it comes in a little bit different packaging. And it says this is spring water utaj jelly. Cool down during the heat of summer with this refreshing jelly made with green apples and natural spring water. So that's really interesting and I'm just gonna slide it out. So it's got sort of like this greenish yellow tinge to it. And it's made with green apples and spring water. So that'll be interesting to try too. Then we've got this handcrafted ginger cinnamon candy and it comes in really nice packagings. All of these come with really nice packaging. And that's one thing I've heard of in the Japanese culture is they not only take pride in their products, but they take pride in their packaging too. So I really appreciate that. It says this hard candy is kneaded, shaped and cut by hand using traditional methods from the Edo period. The fragrance and spice of the organic cinnamon and orange flavor pairs well with tea. That sounds really nice. <laughs> and this is our sweet potato sachi steamed cake. And this is the one that I did the artwork on this month, which will be at the end of the video. And it says that this beautifully rich and dense steamed cake is made with smooth, sweet satsumamo potato and hokkaido milk. Although not as prevalent as they once were, roasted sweet potato food trucks are still operating around Tokyo. And it says there's a little tip here to heat it up in the microwave a few seconds for a truly luxurious cake time. Yes, yes, I will be trying this for sure. And it feels like in the packaging, like it feels so soft, so moist. Like I don't understand how they can keep it that way as it's traveling across the country. And then we get our two packets of tea this month. So this is Sencha tea. And it says this authentic Sencha is by Satoin, located in the tea region of Shizuoka. It is perfect for everyday tea and is the most popular blend. Sencha is made by roasting the whole tea leaf multiple times, resulting in rich flavor. And it does say here that you wanna let the tea cool off to 80 to 90 degrees and let the tea bag brew for one to two minutes. It says if the water is too hot, it will burn the tea leaves and cause a bitter taste. So I'll go ahead and make this tea up before we try some of our snacks. And then this is the little plate that we get this month. So it's a cute little like snack plate. And it says this Japanese four season side dish, this lacquerware plate is the perfect size for snacks or small cakes. It features the beautiful gold design of Sakura Momiji contrasted against a classic black background. And this is dishwasher and microwave friendly. So that is really cool. So you're not gonna risk ruining it. And it's just the perfect size to have like a few little cookies or some crackers or a little piece of cake on it. I love that, that's really cool. And I love that each month they give you a different type of dishware. So that's also really cool. So that's everything that came in this month's box. I'm gonna go ahead, make the tea, pull out a few of the snacks to try, and then I will have the time lapse of the artwork at the end if you wanna see that. So I went ahead and boiled some water and I've let it cool down and I've got my uh, cup of water here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put this Sencha tea in. Now, I like that this came in a little bag and I don't know if you can see in there, but it's full of these little, like actual little tea leaves. And I thought this was gonna smell like green tea and it does, but it also has like a sweet hint to it and like almost like a lemony floral um, smell to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit in my cup for a couple of minutes and it's nice, you can just sit it there and then we'll try that out in a few minutes. But I'm gonna go ahead and try out our sweet potato sencha cake here. And I did microwave it for a few seconds and I used the plate uh, that came in the kit this month and it did fine in the microwave, no problems at all. And it smells, it smells so sweet, like sweet cake, like pound cake or something, like a really sweet pound cake, it smells delicious. And this is what the inside looks like. 
and it's got that purple color on the bottom as well and it's like it's really squishy like I don't know if you guys can see but it's really like squishy and moist but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try Mm. it just like melts in your mouth it is I've not had mm. it's sweet and it just like sort of melts into your mouth and it's not overly sweet like I love sweets like I'm a brownie girl I love brownies I love cookies like give me the sweetness but this is just like a perfect like cakey like really moist cakey texture with some sweetness mm. And it's almost got a hint of like, I don't know if you've ever had like whipped sweet potatoes. It's almost got that kind of texture like on the inside of it, like a whipped sweet potato, but in a cakey form. It's, it's weird, but it is amazing. Next, I think I'm going to try this sesame shrimp and aged mochi stuff. So this is supposed to be like crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside. I think I want to give that a try to see how like shrimpy it actually is. So that's what it looks like there. And it is like, like hard and crunchy on the outside it feels like. So that's what it looks like on the inside. Mm. That is really good too. It's not like a huge like shrimp or fish flavor. Actually, I don't really get that much, but mind you, I do like seafood. I love seafood, so I don't mind shrimp or fish flavors at all, um, but I'm not getting a huge taste of that maybe a slight aftertaste of like the shrimpy taste but it's more like salty and I can definitely taste the sesame in there you know what I'm gonna go ahead and try one more mm. it just has like the perfect crunch to it like the perfect crunch ratio I don't know what it is but it's like it's almost like a puff like I don't know if you've ever had like those puffy chips before but it's got a little bit of crunch like that but some puffiness on the inside mm. I really like those too now mind you I'm not a foodie I don't you know I love to eat food obviously but I'm not like a real good food critique so take whatever I say in this like unboxing mini review with a grain of salt please <laughs> okay our tea's been sitting for a couple of minutes now so this is what it looks like in there. And now I believe when you're, you know, doing a proper tea, you don't just let the tea bag sit in there forever and ever. You actually, you know, uh, take it out and then you drink the tea like this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it out and we're going to try it. So we've got our Sencha tea here. That's good tea. Yeah, that's really good tea. It's definitely got some green tea in it. Now, I don't know what Sencha is. Maybe Sencha is a type of green tea. It definitely tastes like green tea, but there's something else in there. There's another kind of flavor in there. Maybe a little bit of lemony, a little bit of floral, something in there. Like, it's it's got this sweetness to it. And that I wonder if that's why they included this tea, because it might pair well with sweets as well but I really like that. So the next thing I wanna try are these spicy mentaco beans. And I like a little bit of spice, but I'm not a huge spice fan. So we'll see how this one goes. Now I do like how this one is a resealable package. So you can take a few out and then reseal it for later, especially if this is super spicy, I'm only gonna be able to eat one every once in a while. So that's what they look like and they are hard. It is fairly hard. 
Oh, it's got like this, um, like an earthy scent to it. Oh, and there is like a little bean or a little peanut in there. Mmm. Actually, woo! Okay, there's the spice. The spice is hitting, but it's not bad. It's not like my mouth is on fire spice. It just, it kind of hits you for like a second and then it sort of mellows out. But that has a lot of flavor going on in there. Like there is a lot, a lot of flavors. Now, it does say that there could possibly be a fish allergy with this and that there's the spicy cod roe in there. However, I'm not getting a real fishy taste at all. So if you're one that doesn't like fish, this might be okay for you. But it's definitely got a little kick to it. But it's not anything, you know, I'm going to try another one because uh, it's actually pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I can definitely taste like the little peanut or bean or whatever's in there it's got like a peanutty flavor to it and then that then that spice kicks in like after a few seconds after you've kind of swallowed it but it's not like a down your throat kind of spice it's just in your mouth and it's sort of like hello here I am and then it's gone I really like that one too I didn't think I was going to like this at all so that's why I sort of wanted to try it on camera now um but surprisingly I really like these. Tea break. Mm. Definitely good tea. I would definitely drink that again. And I know there's a site, um, I'll try to link it down below, where you can buy some of these products separately. So I'm going to have to look in to see if I can get some of that tea separately because that is really nice tea. So the next thing I wanted to try were these ginger cinnamon candies. I love candies. Um, I love cinnamon. Ginger, I haven't had too much with ginger in it, so I'm really interested to see how these taste. So that's what it looks like there, and it's got this little, like, design on it. And it sort of reminds me of those candies that you get, like, at Christmas time, the, the sugar candies. Um, it kind of looks like that, but... Let's go ahead and try it. Mmm. Mmm. Right away that ginger hits, but then like right away comes the cinnamon as well. So it's not like too gingery or too spicy at all. It's just sort of perfect. It's a very, like, I would say this would be a very nice, like, after dinner or after dessert. You know, if you just want to pop it in your mouth, cleanse your palate out, if that's a thing that you do. I really like that, too. This is really good. <laughs> so that's all the snacks that I'm going to try for today, I think. I don't want to get too overwhelmed and try too much because I do want to enjoy them throughout the month, like I said. So if you guys want to stay and watch the speed painting of this sweet potato sachi steamed cake that we got. That's going to be coming up in just a minute, but thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one. Bye!